Hey guys, Hawker here and welcome back to a brand new analysis video. With the major done and dusted, I figured now is the best possible time to go over some cool stuff I saw in the major. So let's not waste any time, let's jump right into it. We're going to start with some lovely on the fly thinking from Astralis in this low buy round against Dream Eaters. So Glaive gets this smoke from A long thanks to some good early trades and Astralis end up losing the B bombsite later in the round, meaning they either have to retake or just try to deny the save. The cool thing about Dust 2 though is the B site only really has two exits, so Astralis realise that they can use this smoke they have recovered and some presence in B tunnels to force Dream Eaters to all exit through the other side, and then Astralis are right there waiting for them to get a couple of kills at the end. Again, this isn't the kind of thing that's going to make a massive difference, it's not like they won the round, but it's always nice to limit your opponent's economy, especially in this current era of Counter-Strike, it can be very hard to build up that money, so every little helps. Now let's switch to a gun round for Astralis, where they are against the Force Buy from Dream Eaters, and Glaive is pushed into B tunnels. And I think Glaive plays this round so smart. He is really, really safe and calculated in this one. He gets the smoke early thanks to the jump peek across. Then he gets more information jump peeking over the smoke. Not an easy shot to hit from the other side, so he's pretty safe in doing so. And then to top it all off, this final flashbang from Glaive that he bounces off the wall, which lands in front of the box so that he doesn't get blinded, is just beautiful. And it's the kind of small thing that you don't see from a lot of players, but it's clear that Astralis always do their homework. Now let's switch over to looking at Avangar, who are one of the surprise packages of the Major for me. And it's team play like this that helped them make it to playoffs. So Avangar decide to go for a 4B stack early, but they make it look like they're using their standard nades on Banana. You can see the nades, the mollies coming through, and then the rotate away. So from Complexity's point of view, they think that Banana's pretty safe at this point. They start to move forwards to try to take control, and then Avangar have still got two nades left up their sleeve, which they manage to dunk straight onto Shazam. I don't think he even gets to see anyone in this round, and that means you've done something right. I think you really get to see exactly how this works well from the overview shot. Complexity have got no clue that there are further nades coming, and it allows a Vanguard to get such an early advantage and put them in prime position to win this round. Let's switch from a game that went well for a Vanguard to one that went pretty poorly for them up against Ents. So just to set the scene, here in round 6, Jane gets boosted in towards mid to try to get a pick, and you can clearly see that Entz spotted that out. So in the very next round, Sergei plays this close angle, and as soon as he hears the scope in, he takes that as his cue to swing out wide to catch both these players off guard, and it's just such an off angle in the pro scene that Avangar don't even take it into account. So Sergei gets away with two kills, and this is just a smart little play that Avangar were not ready for whatsoever. Speaking of smart plays from Ents, they were consistently switching up their A hold throughout the entirety of their CT side overpass, and this specific round, they had really aggressive crossfires here in towards long bathrooms, but you also have to take note that both Alexi B and Sergei are making sure that they have the advantage in these fights by being able to spot out the shadows. I think it was Bardolf who pointed this out live in the game while casting, so shout out to him. And yes, maybe a Vanguard could have used their nades better, they probably should have flashed their way forwards, but it's still a cool setup and definitely something you guys could run in matchmaking. Let's switch our focus over to FaZe, who may not have had the best major, but they did win this game against Mouse Sports. And here in round 5, they go for a nice little boost over towards the B apartments to net themselves the opening kill. Again, this isn't anything that's incredibly innovative or new, but they're on a half buy anyway with some guns saved from the previous round, and I think this play is so underutilized in the professional scene that Mouse Sports just don't expect it whatsoever. 
The other upside to this boost is it's quite easy to just duck under this window and make it really difficult for the riflers to find an angle on towards you. You can easily get back to safety and that's what phase do to gain a nice man advantage. And then from here, this is I think the one game of the major where mouse sports had maybe some communication issues or some calling issues. They end up being incredibly indecisive in this round. And FaZe actually nearly end up winning this round, even though they had the low buy, in part thanks to that opening kill they found. I've refrained from talking about Vertigo for a while in this video, since I dedicated an entire video to it. But eventually we've got to stray into the new territory. A Vanguard go for a really nice A execute on the pistol round here, which does require three smokes, but it smokes off basically every position that Renegades can hold the bomb from. And once a Vanguard get this bomb down in a man advantage scenario, there's basically no way for Renegades to win this round. I think this is the sort of round where it's really nice to get an overview shot to see exactly where all the utility ends up going. So you get to see the smoke and Molotov combo over on what I call the sort of mid side. And this effectively guarantees that Avangar are completely safe from that side. And then a little bit later, these two smokes land on the other side of the site to keep the bomb planter safe. And even if a player pushes through these smokes, a Vanguard are planting on the safe side of the box from this angle so that the bomb plant is almost certainly going to come through. And as we speed up the end of the round, you can see a Vanguard can trade this out pretty easily and get themselves an easy pistol round win, which isn't going to be one that's easy to counter in the future. Oh, and by the way, in case you were wondering about how powerful this strategy is, Renegades actually end up using it themselves later in the tournament against G2 in this very round, and it works perfectly. I think you can theorycraft some potential ways to counter this strategy. Maybe you have to peek down in towards A ramp to get some early information, or maybe there's some double nade shenanigans that you can use to try to deny the bomb plant. But these are the sorts of things you can only really commit to if you're 100% sure your opponents are running this pistol round strategy, which is unlikely to be the case. So this is definitely not an easy one to counter. Especially because there are so many angles and so many ways you can hold this crossfire down in towards this position here to watch the bomb. It's really, really difficult for the CTs to consistently win out on these trades. And that's why it feels very difficult to come out on top here. Sticking with this Renegades T side of Vertigo against G2. We've been seeing a lot of those A takes come through in these pro games. And I think once teams start to adapt to that, once teams start to rotate over a little bit quicker, we're going to see many more fakes like this round from Renegades. They throw the standard smokes over towards the A site, and then the lack of information from the G2 camp means that they decide to rotate players over. And just this small rotation gives Renegades a perfect timing window to catch the players in transition to start to move towards B where there is now only a single defender and even though Renegades still have work to do after they get this bomb planted it leaves them in good shape to try to clutch out the round considering how little weaponry they had and considering they were at a man disadvantage at the start of this sequence of events and then credit to the players for clutching. And finally, let's go over to Tyloo versus G2, where Bentet wins this fight over towards A long at the start of the round. And even though he gets traded out by Kenny, this ends up having ramifications later on. So with that first kill coming in from Bentet, now the bomb is pushing alone over towards A long. And as the push eventually comes towards the site with G2 looking to move forwards, the bomb ends up getting dropped towards A long, making it much more difficult for G2 to get towards the site and also allowing Tyloo to rotate up much more easily. And they end up winning the round with a full rotation over towards A. So it just goes to show how that earlier kill from Bentet ended up having a huge impact later in the round. 
And I think that's going to be us done for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and make sure to tune in next time.